Hi, Brian. How are you doing today? Doing great, Gilbert. Thanks for having me. Yes, uh, maybe you can just start off by giving uh, our audience a bit of an overview about your company, Jericho. Yeah, absolutely. So our company is Jericho Energy Ventures. We call it JEV. And I'm happy to introduce you to what we're doing in the world of clean energy. So, you know, we have spent the last three years in the clean energy movement. We're very proud of this time and what we've done. Uh, we are particularly focused on industrial decarbonization. Um, one of our biggest breakthroughs was the acquisition of hydrogen technologies and their groundbreaking zero emission hydrogen boiler system. So we are the only company in the world that has a patented process for turning what is one of the hardest to decarbonize industries, industrial in the industrial industry, into a clean production facility. Um, and we make all this possible through our wholly owned subsidiary, Hydrogen Technologies. So can you tell us a bit more about what would be your growth strategy as the whole, whole energy transition? How do you position yourself? How do you grow your company? So for us, you know, the focus has always been to take a cue from our main shareholders. So our company is funded and started with core shareholders, one of which is the CEO and chairman of DuPont. So we like to take a cue from big companies like that and how they think about growing and being a part of the decarbonization strategy. So at Jericho, we too are focused on that. And so what we will see from us is a continued focus on groundbreaking, patented, cutting edge technology that is focused on the decarbonization, but also the ability to capture clients. And so for us, it's bringing that technology commercially to the market and then also bringing it to the customers and meeting their needs. And so when we think about this opportunity, we look at it and say, if you look at what's happened in Europe and we have a partnership in Europe and are focused on growing in Europe, we're starting to see the beginning stages in the US and Canada of a growth opportunity that is really sort of driving into the hydrogen economy. Um, we see hydrogen as a key part of this growth and a key part of how Jericho will continue to grow. So we look at it from lead with our boiler technology um, and then have the opportunity to bring the whole hydrogen value chain to our Fortune 500 um, and district energy customers. Great to hear. So let's touch upon some of your recent developments. You recently have some good news there. And uh, I believe your company have a new patent from the USPTO. Can you elaborate a bit on, on that side? Yeah, so this is, this is uh, an amazing accomplishment by our technical team. So not only have we patented our first generation hydrogen boiler zero emission system, but we now have some of our second generation patents issued. And we have several other patents related to the second generation DCC that are pending with the US Patent Trademark Office. So for us, it's an amazing opportunity to continue to lead the world from a decarbonization in the industrial sector. Um, this development has been key in helping us as we have pushed through into Europe, as we have pushed through with district heating and a leading university, as well as the largest alcohol beverage company in the United States. So you're seeing globally an adoption of industrial decarbonization solutions, and Jericho is a big part of that. So we also see some uh, on the on the on the on Europe's side some good development is that one of the U U.S. universities start to deploy the DCC steam boiler. Uh, what's the potential of it? Are we seeing a trend that more and more groups is going to use that uh, in, uh, to in incorporate into their buildings? Super exciting opportunity for us. Amazing opportunity. So when we think about deploying our technology, we think about it in mass appeal. We never want to be working with single users. We want to work with people that have the opportunity to use our technology over and over and over again and make it a big part of their capital capital program going forward, excuse me. And the idea here is that district heating is enormous, right? So if you think about how people currently heat their facilities, whether they be universities, whether they be cities, whether they be communities, a lot of it is done through district heating systems. And those systems run on one of three fuels, coal, 
natural gas or diesel fuel. So huge decarbonization potential there. And so here we have one of the leading universities in the United States that currently deploys north of 15 boilers using RDC as their way of decarbonizing the whole campus. So we are so looking forward to the opportunity to show this and share it with the world because we think it's going to be the path forward for every university. And so if you take that a step further, how big is district heating? Right? District heating is a $10 billion market in and of itself. So you know the opportunity to grow into that market and use our technology to decarbonize it it, it, it is just the beginning for Jericho and, and an amazing path forward. So this university is a groundbreaking place for us where we intend to not only deploy the DCC, but make it our showcase for the district energy world. Sound really exciting indeed. So usually at the end of the interview, we we'll always ask an important question to the speaker is that, is you, do you think Jericho is undervalued right now? And why should investors consider investing into your company? So obviously as the CEO of Jericho, I think we're always undervalued. But I also think that, you know, Atrium Research, which is a buy side research company, the report really sums it up well. So if you think about where Jericho is and where we're going, right? So if you think about what Atrium says, we have leading edge technology for the hydrogen future. We have oil and gas assets that provide cash flow. So unlike a lot of other folks, we're not always raising money to fit our hydrogen strat to grow our hydrogen strategy. We do have $90 oil facilitating some of that cash flow needs at the hydrogen level. So for us, we think that the opportunity to continue to use that cash flow, um, but continue to acquire customers in the hydrogen space is an enormous gross potential. And if you think about it to date, we've done 34 feasibility studies for very large global companies. Not one single person said, no way are we going forward. They all say the same thing to us. How do we implement? Where do we get the hydrogen? And how soon can we put that process in place? So for us, that is the growth plan. Continue to focus on big companies, companies that can deploy multiple units of our boiler, but also need clean hydrogen to run not only our system, but their whole energy transition system. And so for us, we think Atrium did a great job of summarizing that up and showing how significantly undervalued our company is. But as a CEO, I think the things we're doing are off the charts in terms of growth opportunity and, and so look forward to you know, the very near future and sharing some of those things with, with you and with everybody that's an investor in Jericho. So for us, can't wait to see the next you know, few months here as we run out the year in 2023 unfold and share those with everyone because we think it's going to be a pretty exciting time here at Jericho. So it looks like it's just the beginning of something really potentially big here for Jericho. Uh, well, so remember this. We have been big participants in grant programs and hydrogen hubs. Um, I think you're going to hear some things on the hydrogen hubs, hopefully early next month, end of this month, probably early next month. It is groundbreaking for Jericho. So we have an amazing project inside the Halo Hub that would lead us into uh, the largest decarbonization project in the food and beverage industry. Um, cannot wait for that announcement. Pretty excited that you know we're part of it, and I think it's going to be the tip of the iceberg for Jericho and where we go with that. So obviously, no guarantees that our hub wins or any of the hubs we're in win. But you know, should they be successful and win the day as part of the DOE program, these things are springboards for us to decarbonize in so many industries, so many opportunities. Um, and we've only we've only begun this process, so we think of it as tip of the spear because each one we do, our industries, we've never ever thought about before. And I can roll, you have food, beverage, pulp, paper, auto, chemical, pharma. I mean, the list goes on and on of all of these decarbonization opportunities that are standing there asking us to help them figure out how they use our technology to bring down their industrial emissions. So cannot wait to see this unfold over the coming months, Gilbert.
Yeah, so thank you for your time here and sharing your story with us, Brian. Thank you for your time, indeed. Thanks, Gilbert. Appreciate it. Yeah, talk to you later.